Dude, 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 like dude, 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 dude. You are stupid upset. Like it's stupid. <laughs> Yo, I just could not help myself. It was laid out on a silver platter. Generational meme right there. Okay, so Gladiator 2. You know it's never a good look when the core thoughts surrounding the very idea of your movie are, why is this movie even being made? Or what is the point? Or how this movie has too big a shoes to fill? Two meta references in the first 30 seconds of the video. I'm pretty much phase four MCU at this point. But I should probably talk about my thoughts first before getting into the thoughts of the audience. Because for me, as someone who didn't watch the original God Tier Gladiator for the first time until the day before watching Gladiator 2 in the theaters, my perspective is just a little different when it comes to the outlook, mindset, experience, and enjoyment while watching Gladiator 2. And so with that being said, there is no point in not telling the truth when saying that I was mildly entertained by the time that I left the theater. It didn't feel the same disrespect, disservice, or unsatisfied feeling that some of the others in the audience might have felt by the time the end credits came rolling along in this almost three and a half hour movie commitment. I did feel a little disrespected about that, but the worst part is, is that this is a movie that is also missing about 30 minutes on the cutting room floor, so it really is a double-edged sword situation. And while that's not to say that Gladiator 2 is a good movie when it comes to what you're actually looking for and the actual important movie making aspects, because that is definitely not the case. The narrative would get copyright struck if it wasn't directed by the same bloke, a rewriting of the ending that is only really accepted because it's made by that same bloke, the character writing is virtually non-existent for some characters while inconsistent at best when it comes to other characters because this movie just has way too many characters to begin with, forced, repurposed, and sometimes just straight up reused dialogue sequences or shots in order to attempt to satisfy those member berries, extreme gaps in pacing, character resolutions, character motivations, and setting up stakes with no real identity, merit, or reason for even showing up to the party. Now unless that reason that you came to the party is that you came into some money and decided to show off the new look. Pretty douchey for sure, but what Gladiator 2 lacks when it comes to substance is made up for in spectacle. And while sure that's not going to tickle the fancy of every audience member, there is no doubt that the action set pieces is where this movie truly shines and is the strongest leg to stand on. And in a time where we, the audience, are facing the most lack of creativity Hollywood era right now where big budget blockbuster money laundering schemes are as common as fast food value meals, Gladiator 2 is at least a movie where I was watching and I knew exactly where this quarter billion dollar budget went. And while it might seem as if the action set pieces and just the sheer appearance of Denzelko in your film alone could more than likely propel Gladiator 2 into exceeding their financial expectations, the bigger issue I think this movie genuinely faces is that it's really going down the path of either living or dying by the tale of two fandoms and two sides of the same coin when it comes to the audience. But we'll get into that a little later. For now, let's go ahead and talk. Crazy that this is just another situation of being short, simple, and to the point. Because obviously, if you have seen Gladiator, then you have seen Gladiator 2. The clearance version, of course. Gladiator 2 picks up 24 years after the events of Maximus being an absolute badass in front of all of Rome, and follows the story of Lucius Aurelius. Also, I don't know if there was a Mandela effect or not, or maybe I'm just a bloke, but I felt like some characters were calling him Lucius, and some characters were calling him Lucius. But, maybe again, I am just a bloke. So with Lucius being sent away from the city as a boy due to the death of Commodus and fear for his life as the true heir to the throne, Lucius now finds himself on the opposite end of the war and as an enemy of Rome. After a siege gone wrong led by General Pedro Pascal that not only takes his wife, but his identity as he now finds himself a slave on the same path as his father before him, Lucius now makes his name as former slave turned gladiator named Hama as he sets his eyes on revenge while catching the eye of former gladiator now gladiator master Denzel Go. As the two now journey into a new Rome now ruled by two tyrannical twins that we don't get any backstories for, which is pretty annoying seeing how they were the most interesting characters from my point of view, we watch as our two co-leads, each with differing motivations, tactics, and resources in order to obtain their goals, attempt to navigate the corruption, betrayals, and chaos that has now plagued the Empire. But will Lucius regain his sense of self and honor on his quest for revenge, and reignite a dream of Rome that has since been lost? Or has the Empire already fallen to the power of the Colosseum? Obviously, to just go ahead and address the elephant in the room, 
Did the OG Gladiator need a sequel? And does this movie have a legitimate reason to even exist? No, not really. As I mentioned with the majority of my videos, the aspect of character writing is a lost cause at this point in Hollywood. But for a sequel that is based off a highly character-driven movie, you would think that a little bit more time, effort, dedication, and grace would be put into that aspect. But the major gaps of character development and off-screen world building of say the twins becoming emperors and not knowing how that happened or who these characters are or the divide in the relationship between Lucius and his mother and I guess how he just didn't understand the stakes of the situation or how his mother never stressed or checked in on him throughout the entirety of his life but instead just remarried to some bloke became more and more of a glaring weakness of the movie as time went along, as well as having to juggle other new additional characters such as General Pedro Pascal and Denzel Go, two actors who pretty much demand the screen at all costs, not only because of name recognizability, but their craft for the game itself. There were just too many ingredients in the kitchen for any of the characters to really grasp your attention or really immerse you into their own personal stakes. The complete opposite end of the spectrum when compared to Maximus or even Commodus from the OG, but in that same breath, the action set pieces have to be some of the best of the year on the likes with Dune too. Character performances are top notch with Pedro, who gets a lot of hate that I don't really understand, and Denzel Goat just commands the screen again and again, and what Ridley Scott is able to achieve behind the camera at almost 90 years old is nothing short of an incredible feat. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to, or at least I didn't want to just come out here and compare and contrast Gladiator 2 to the OG Gladiator. It would have felt and just does feel lazy, but you can't really help it when the movie itself doesn't really give you any choice because of the lack of risk and originality that was on display in this sequel. And that just goes back to what I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, when I mentioned that the bigger issue that this movie genuinely faces is that it's going down the path of either living or dying by the tale of two fandoms, or two sides of the same coin when it comes to the audience. You have the side of the audience that I am on that doesn't have any personal stakes in the game when it comes to the OG Gladiator, therefore not feeling disrespected or dissatisfied even if given a poor product, while on the opposite end of the spectrum, having the audience that reveres the OG Gladiator as cinema on a screen and a masterpiece not to be tampered with. And while you as a studio could go into the making of this movie with the mindset of not needing that side of the fandom, I think that is an idea that can only come from an industry that has their heads shoved so far up their own ass. But who cares in reality, this movie is going to die under the weight of Wicked and Moana 2 in the next couple weeks before another full slate in December. GG's. So in a ranking tier list that does finally have a name, the 2024 Hollywood filler arc, from my point of view, Gladiator 2 is an A for effort type of movie, and unfortunately a movie that could have easily gained the access of being an actual movie if you just look at it from spectacle alone, but a movie that has to go through this many loops just to get made and still doesn't make sense narrative wise is just a hard pill to swallow as an audience member. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.